Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be replacing the motors on the Hubzin uh, 502. I can't remember if this is in E or an S, but it's the 502. And you might remember way back in the summertime, I had a kind of a crash with this. Uh, the motors gave out. One of the things I find with this is probably about 50 flights or so, and the motors kind of give out. So what I've done is I've actually picked these up. Uh, from um, Micro Motor Warehouse and uh, these are supposed to be a little bit hotter motor I'm hoping a little bit better quality motor than what comes in the Hubson and so but we'll see so um, anyways let's get into it I'm gonna uh, kind of go through a little bit of the disassembly here I've had this guy apart before to do the camera mod so you might remember in the past so in short we have several different screw configurations down here that we have to remove I might bump you a little bit here so we got the feet here we have here and here here and here here and here so I'm gonna go ahead and take all these screws out I'm gonna probably fast forward this a little bit because uh, it's gonna be boring taking out screws and then we'll kinda take a look at what's inside so let's get to it Okay, so I have this opened up, and I've removed the top. The top comes off with a couple um, DFT clips or, or DuPont clips that plug in here. I'm assuming these are for the compass in the uh, GPS antenna, which are in the top here. Now, there's also, uh, I mentioned uh, the screws here. There's also screws in these end pods, once you remove the feet, that you also have to take out. Now, I've removed the gears, and I've kept the gears in, in order which they've come. And uh, so I've already cleaned them, because one of the things I'm going to do is lube it with uh, some Teflon dry film lubricant before reassembly. Uh, but I want to change the motors first. Now... This is the first time I've ever changed the motors on this, and it's definitely not, um, looks like a common task, because these these are soldered in. And the uh, motors that I got from Micromotor Warehouse, the leads are nowhere near as long as the leads here, so I'm going to probably have to solder the leads. So I've got a choice, well, really probably about the only choice I have is really to solder the leads or solder an extra a longer wire on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip these wires and then just solder it on to here and extend them and then uh, put a little bit of heat shrink tub tubing over that to, you know, uh, prevent any shorting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pop these motors out um, because one of the things we have to change the gears on here and the motor, the uh, gearing pops off and I'm not sure if it goes specific but I am going to try to keep it that way so I'm going to go black white and then return these the same way that I took them off and I'm going to go around to do this on all the motors and that way when I go through to replace it I know I got the right gears on the motors um, for what I need and these just kind of pop off with a little bit of brute force and again putting these on I hope all this works in the end and ooh, don't know my thumbnails are going to be left after this The way the motors remove are from the top, these uh, basic two uh, fingers hold them in and then you pull them up. What I'm going to do is simply snip these wires here and then solder them to this and put some heat shrink tube on them and kind of pull them back down through this assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and do, do, do them and I'll come back and show you how I did them rather than you watching me fumble through doing them. Okay, so I'm back. I soldered these in. One of the things I did is I only put heat shrink tubing on one of the leads because the arms and everything are plastic and I didn't want to 
uh, bunch it up because there's not a lot of room in here so I left the other one bare so there's nothing for it to short out against again because this is plastic and just to kind of save on room and as you can see this is what it looks like so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go ahead and reassemble the gears and then I'm going to um, lube it with this Teflon nonstick dry film lubricant so when I get this kind of put back together I'll show you how I lubed one and then it's that way for all four so I'm going to go put the gear assembly back together then we're going to come back and lube this so actually what I decided after looking at this to do is uh, lube the assembly before putting it together uh, because the way it sits on a little kind of pin down there and everything. So I've got my uh, Teflon nonstick dry film lubricant. Now you have to really shake this up good. You want to make sure there's nothing still left at the bottom. And uh, I got a little paper towel here. And it's not going to take much to do this. So I mean just a, a basically a drop or so will do you. Um, whoa. It's a little bit more than a drop, but uh, it wants to come out of there. So, uh, again, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to kind of work this in here and work this around and kind of work it back and forth. I've already wiped this off. I'm going to wipe up my mat here before I get in trouble. But uh, uh, I'm just going to work it back and forth in here like I did, and that should be good. But I cleaned off the old grease beforehand, and so this is what I'm going to do for all four. So I'm going to go ahead and do all four, then we'll come back. Okay, welcome back. So I've got everything pretty much reassembled, at least from this standpoint, everything threaded in. It took me a little bit to get everything organized as it should. Uh, and in place. One of the things that I discovered is I was going through reassembling the motor. Uh, if you might remember, it's got the two nylon gears. I noticed several of them had little chunks of nylon stuck in the gears. The gears are really fine. So what I actually had to do is use this pointed thing I got for uh, ICs or whatever to go through each one of the gears and make sure it was clean until these uh, turned perfectly smooth. Because the little pieces of the nylon you know, again, this is, you know, of, of probably low quality assurance manufacturer on the gears. Um, you know, had chewed up some of the bottom and, and got it caught in the gears. I cleaned that up, and so now that's turning super smooth. So this should be a great flyer when we get it back out. So now I'm going to go go ahead and reassemble the top. This all basically goes back together you know, sort of as we took it apart. So I'm going to go ahead and reconnect that. Uh, you know, again, remember, these DFTs go in here. Uh, make sure you get them the right way. Um, I think the way it looks is you can't mix them up because they look like different type of connectors, but just on the safe side, I'd taken pictures of all this too before I started the real disassembly. So each step. Anyways, just something I recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, and then we'll meet back here and kind of talk about the whole process. Okay, so we've got it all back together. Uh, one of the problems, I kind of had to drop the time lapse a little bit because I ran into a bit of a problem with the propellers. I have this so smooth, this running so smooth, I couldn't turn the uh, shafts to get them to the propellers to lock in. So actually what I had to do is work some hemostats in down here to grab the shaft to hold it to spin the prop and get it to notch on there. So this is really smooth. So I'm really looking forward to running this with the uh, um, micro warehouse motors. I think that's what it is. And so uh, I do do have to, however, order some new batteries. I don't know if you can tell. These are kind of puffy. These have been sitting since summer. And uh, I think they've seen better days. So don't want to fly with the crappy uh, lithium battery. So I'm going to get some of those. Also, I have some links below to this. Um, this is one of the main reasons I got this stuff was for this, and this really has turned out to be handy stuff for a lot of things. I use it on my 3D printers, CNC's, all kinds of stuff. So uh, 
and again, that's one of the reasons it's kind of smooth. And one of the things you probably saw me do, maybe in the time lapse, is I put a little drop and I spun this on, on the gears. Because um, I wanted to get the gears themselves lubed up. So the shafts, the gears, the nylon bearings, all that's in super shape. So this thing's going to be ready for the flying season come spring, or at least a little bit warmer weather here in Michigan. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. This took me about mm, two hours to do filming and everything if you really hurried through it you might be able to do it in about an hour an hour and a half um, you know threading the wires took quite a bit of time uh, a lot longer than I expected and then cleaning out the gears took you know I didn't expect to have to do that but it was well worth it because the nylon was in there so that took probably 15-20 minutes to do so I got about two hours into this if you really hurried maybe an hour and a half but anyways well worth it I love flying this bird and so expect to see more videos from it and this is what I was really hoping DJI was going to do is come out with something like this but a serious version okay with no gimbal but a 1080p camera of quality a little bit more quality frame brushless motors again this has GPS its big brother has FPV so again, there's no reason they couldn't have done one, I think, for 250 to 300 range of a serious brushless version of this. And man, that would have been a great copter because one of the things I like about this is the weight. Um, I believe it uh, comes in around 160 grams. So uh, I think it's under the FAA registration limits. Don't quote me 100% on that, but I believe so. So I really like that about this guy. So anyways, thumbs up. Let me know what you're thinking about for lunch. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.